Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, Enterprise Connectivity, Unleashing the Power of Data in Digital Transformation. My name is Jen, and I will be facilitating today's session. We have a lot of valuable information from both Kepware and LNS Research to share today, but before we get started, I want to cover a few quick housekeeping details. At any time during today's session, you can submit questions via the Q&A panel feature of your screen. We'll save questions until the end, and we'll get to as many as we can. If we don't get to your question today, we'll be sure to follow up. This session will be recorded and will be made available for replay after today's event. Our speakers today are Niels Anderson and Kyle Carew. Niels Anderson, Principal Research Analyst, conducts research on a broad range of industrial transformation topics, utilizing his 30 plus experience years in industrial technology and software, and has held executive positions at industry leading organizations. Niels's main co research coverage areas include factory of the future, industrial transformation readiness, industrial analytics, and software architecture. PTC's Kyle Carew is the enablement manager for the Kepware team at PTC. Kyle is the go-to technical and commercial resource for Kepware's technology partners, international distributors, and North American resellers. He has also had a decade of experience in industrial automation with a heavy focus on industrial networking and communications, SCADA, HMI, software, and PLCs. In this webinar, we will be discussing data connectivity, data quality challenges, and best practices. We'll also look at LNS Research Industrial Transformation Framework and prioritizing connectivity and getting funding. And now I'll turn it over to Niels with LNS Research. Thank you, Jen, and thank you for that introduction. So let me just talk a little bit about LNS Research before we dive into the detail. So we are a research firm that fo focuses on operations, uh, unlike many other firms that are more focused on the IT side of business, and we're very focused on manufacturing. We are on a mission to empower in industry leaders to transform the organization, and we specifically focus on step changes uh, in addition to incremental improvements. We have a strong vision, and our vision is a world where industrial companies are agile, autonomous, and sustainable. So, so with that introduction to LNS Research, Kyle, why don't you tell us about Kepware and your drivers? Awesome. Thanks, Niels, and, and thanks, Jen, and, and hello, everybody. Um, so for those of you who don't know, uh, Kepware is a uh, PTC technology that focuses exclusively on industrial connectivity. So really what that means is we have technology that goes in and can connect to a variety of sources uh, and machines down on your plant floor, whether they be uh, OPC servers, whether they be flow computers, maybe out in the field somewhere, PLCs, databases, whatever might be you know, having data out the plant floor, we have the ability to connect to that and then take that data and transform it into something that um, higher level softwares can understand, whether that be uh, protocols like OPC UA, MQTT, HTTP, HTTPS, whatever it might be, Kepware has the ability to go in, collect that data and send it to where it needs to go. Uh, we've been in the industrial automation space now for almost 30 years. Uh, we actually started off as a uh, very much a, a point to point solution, meaning, hey, if you needed your Rockwell automation PLC to talk to your Siemens software, we had the ability to go in and do that. Now, with you know changing technology and the demand for data uh, becoming much higher, that same technology in Kepware is actually being applied differently and is now being used to connect enterprises together. So we have that scalability from a point solution all the way to an entire enterprise connectivity package. And just to give you an idea of what this looks like, Here's an example of all of our different types of drivers. Now, obviously we're not gonna spend time to go through all of these, but this just gives you an idea of the breadth of connectivity that Kepware has. Uh, now, Niels, I, I would love to hear from the LNS research around the types of challenges that customers are seeing today when it comes to data connectivity. Thank you, Kyle. So as part of the work that LNS Research is doing, we are surveying manufacturers, both the ones that are our members and also the whole world of manufacturers globally. And we have done multiple sets of research. In this presentation, we're gonna to touch on two of them. One is our industrial analytics research. Another one is our state of industrial transformation technology. 
So on this slide here, what you're seeing is an answer to a question where we asked them, what are the top three challenges you have in industrial analytics? And you, know, you could have thought that it was all about the algorithms or how to dive into AI and so on, but consistently across what, both what we have defined as leaders and followers, connectivity and data quality issues is on the top of the list or very high, close to the top of the list. And we see this issue that it's more of an issue with what we call followers. I'm going to show that in a second what that means, but it's both an issue for, for both of them. And the problem here is that they are facing issues into getting data with the right quality, being able to get the buy-in into getting access to the data and also connecting to legacy systems. So let me just quickly explain what a follower and a leader is, because I know from previous presentations, a lot of people ask about that. So we ask our members and other companies that we survey uh, what results they have from their industrial transformation program. And we use that to some degree to self-declare whether they're a leader or follower. So if they have gotten significant results, uh, meaningful value from their industrial transformation program, we put them into the bucket of industrial transformation leader. If they have tried to have an industrial transformation program and not gotten results, we put them into the bucket of followers. And then for the ones who haven't even tried, we basically de declare them as, as laggards. And you will see typically when we do research, we have somewhere between 15 and 25% of our respondents saying that they are in a leader category, to somewhere around 80% that is in a follower and the rest into the, into the laggards category. So when companies have data quality issues, you may ask, what are those issues? And we've identified five buckets to put it into. One is missing data, and this is particularly from an analytics perspective. They thought they had data they, they wanted to do an analysis on, and the data doesn't exist. And unfortunately, one of the primary issues with this is manually collected data. The moment you go in and connect data manually, it's going to be inaccurate, it's going to be infrequent, it's going to be missing, it's going to not be timely, and therefore missing data is really the primary element of what they're getting in. The second element is inconsistent data. And again, this is very often related to data and manual data collection, where the data is not collected the same way every time. People write down things into data fields that can't be analyzed, or they write down the wrong number, or you see differences between when person one and person two does the data collection, and you have inconsistency, which makes you not trust the data. The third element is around for, foreign data protocols. And you know, we see a lot of this issue in the OTIT convergence of the OTIT gap. On the operational technology side, we've had protocols like what Kyle showed us earlier. And then on the IT side, we have now protocols such as HTML and JSON and REST interfaces to get data. And quite often when you do analytics, that the data may exist, but it may not, may not be possible to extract it in the right format in order to analysis. So, and not being able to do that is equally bad to not having the data in the first place. The fourth element is really about data with context. And it could be the most simple thing to say that I'm collecting data and I know the number is five, but that's not meaningful. If I tell you it's a temperature, that means a lot more. If I go in and say it has a degrees Celsius, you know, that's, that's a, a cold summer day here in Southern California. But if I tell you that this belongs to a freezer, you will know that the freezer is not doing its job. So context is really important in order to give the data meaning. And finally, it's about misaligned or tardy data. And we see this primarily in manually collected data where people collect data, they write it down on a piece of paper, they put it into a system later, and then it's timestamp at the time when they put the data into it, to the system instead of timestamp at the data when the recording was actually done. And the full result of this is that data analysts and scientists spend as much as 70% of their time and efforts on data cleaning and preparation instead of what they are paid to do, which is data analysis. Another element of our research we go in and do is that we classify these respondents in levels of maturity. So we have a number of capabilities, a number of results we look for in the respondents, and we put them into five buckets from level one to level five, where level one is the least mature and level five is the most mature, what we call embedded, that do this as day to day operation. What is interesting in that research is the correlation between the level of maturity and the adoption of analytics and how much of how many of them have truly addressed the data connectivity issue and the data adoption, data ops adoption, and data model issue. And we can see this as we go along that 
the more mature companies have been successful in implementing connectivity at a completely different level than the less mature companies. So now that we have identified that data connectivity is an issue, we identified what the issues are, and we identified that the leaders are actually much better at data connectivity. Let's go in and look at how Kepler is solving this. So over to you, Kyle. Great, thanks, Niels. Yeah, so you know, as Niels uh, pointed out here, there's a lot of different elements to uh, the, you know the challenge of data quality issues, and Kepler can actually solve pretty much all of these, right? So if we examine missing data, you know, Niels had mentioned, hey, there's maybe some gaps uh, in some of our data here, and maybe that's from hey, we don't have all the connectivity to our CNC machines. You know, th those are often pretty tricky to get data out of. Well, Kepler has you know native drivers to help go in and gather that uh, gather that data from those CNCs again natively. So there's no developing of code. There's no trying to develop this driver. We have that inherently ready to go. And then the other part of that too is okay, great. Now that we have that data, we need to serve that up in another different type of protocol. So maybe this needs to you know maybe that CNC data needs to go to a SCADA system somewhere. Maybe it needs to go to his, a historian. Maybe we're sending it to the cloud uh, to go to a, a data lake somewhere. Well, that's challenging too. But with Kepware, again, we have the ability to go in and take that data, that industrial data, and then convert it to whatever protocol you might be using. And again, that's, that's OPC UA, um, MQTT, REST, basically anything out there um, that would connect into a factory. Kepware has the ability to go in and do that conversion. And by the way, this is on one platform. This isn't, hey, you need you know separate installs, um, you need a sec separate package. This is all together on, on one cohesive platform. Now, with that in mind, too, we look at inconsistent data, right? So uh, Niels was saying, hey, maybe you've got uh, data from a lot of disparate sources out there. Well, with Kepware, you can aggregate all that data to one platform. So now, all of a sudden, this platform becomes the single source of truth. So you know that you're getting that reliable, consistent data from one platform. Um, and then additionally, in you know, at least from our perspective, and I'm sure Niels can <clears throat> maybe comment on it a little bit later, but contextualization is becoming really huge. And what we've seen throughout the years uh, with Kepware, again, is there was this demand for local connectivity of, hey, we just need these two entities to, to talk to one another. So now all of a sudden, hey, we want to be able to see what our entire operation is doing globally. Well, hey, that's great. We've got the technology to process all that data. We have the ability to do advanced analytics with it. But again, a lot of the time, all of that data that's out on the plant floor is really weird and funky looking, right? So if you've ever looked at a Modbus register, you know, a data science is going in, it's going to go... <clears throat> Oh, wow, what does this 40,001 address, what does that mean? And what does, what does the number five mean? Is that good or bad? Well, with Kepler, you have the ability to go in and actually do some contextualization. Uh, I want to be careful about that. But you can do some contextualization, meaning, hey, you can take those values that are maybe not necessarily human readable and then actually convert that over to be able to be processed. So with that being said, Kepler, you know, clearly can come in and help solve for all these data quality issues. Now, what we've seen throughout the years with Kepware is as folks go in and try to, you know, implement these digital transformation journeys or, or start, they oftentimes will start with a smaller, you know, Niels, I think you referred to it as like a lighthouse project or like, you know, a, a pilot project, something something that's small. But what ends up happening is, you know, you can use Kepware, you can go in, you can start seeing value. But what ends up happening is when they try to scale that out, that, that doesn't always work. Um, so, Niels, I, I'd love to see if you... If, LNS had any research around, you know, some some of the issues around scalability. Thank you, Kyle. We 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 definitely do. And I want to just take a moment and and zoom out, go up to the, at a much higher level, because you know I assume that many on this call are engineers and many maybe in management and executive level as well. But you know, it's so easy for us to get excited about all the connectivity and things we can do, but from an industrial transformation perspective, the work that LNS research is doing really starts at the much higher level. So the, at the core of what we do, we have what we call our industrial transformation framework. And we are very clear that when you want to transform, you need to know what you're transforming to and what you want to achieve. So within our framework, we have 
it's, and it's a very common way of looking at, but we have a very clear definition that you must go in and understand what your business objectives are. And these business objectives may be at multiple levels. It may be at the corporate business objectives, and it may be that you break these down into operational business objectives. If your goal is to expand into new products, into new market, increase revenue, that may put pressure on the operational organization in order to become more flexible and increase capacity and increase yield, for instance. And our framework goes through this and defines what are the objectives, being very clear, breaking it down, and then identifying the initiatives that you need to execute on in order to transform. And we see the need to go in and build an operational architecture that ties it all together so you have a holistic system to handle all the information. And from there on, we get into the more technical elements, such as selecting the solutions or the communication drivers or the software you want to, and making sure that people engage in this in order to change. We've identified a big issue when it comes to transformation, and it's why we really focus on the transformation itself. And we've seen that a number of companies, they try, they are very eager to get going, and they are focused on this vision that they want to be able to achieve the connectivity to everything. They go out and they do pilot plants, they do lighthouse plants. They go out and they experiment to put their toes in the water, but quite often they end up not being able to transform. And we've identified many issues for that. We're gonna focus on a few of those in this presentation itself. But what happens when you, if you don't transform is that you cannot scale. And we're not just talking about scaling in the number of tags or values you connect to. We're scaling in the way, we talk about scaling in a way of being able to have all your plants do this, have all the systems do it, all of them doing it consistently. And in the end, what we're trying to achieve is a system that is not just a program that you transform with, but it's the way that you change so that you become you change the way that you actually do business every day, and we call that the embedded stage. The effect of lack of transformation we've seen is that you go in, you do something, you get value, and quite often you hit the wall. You basically hit this transformation chasm, and if you cannot get across it, you lose momentum and people lose trust and eagerness in order to implement systems, and the value goes down. So what we have identified is the need to pivot. We need to see, we, we, we talk to our manufacturing companies, they're our customers, to go in and say, you must identify certain practices you need to change in order to go from your vision focused approach to your value focused approach. And when you do that change, uh, you will see that the value as you're moving forward is increasing. And there's many aspects of what it means to pivot. We're going to talk about funding here in, in, in just one second. But it's also about the operational architecture to put things, things in place that we can actually build on top of. So here you see one example of what we call the industrial data hub. It's a generalized architecture that just talks about the, the importance of having in a high level architecture that can connect all your different data sources, all the different data uh, applications, the software application together, contextualize the data, have proper data governance, and then feed this data into your data lake or data lakes if you have multiple so that they can be consumed from analytics tools and be used in order to improve your business. So Kyle, with that being said, why don't we talk about scalability and, and how Kepware does this? Awesome, thanks Niels, and, and love seeing that that, that research around uh, you know, crossing the chasm and I love the, love the idea of pivoting to value. Um, you know, and, and again, we, we, we see that a lot where you can have these little science projects, um, but you got to be able to take that vision and actually scale it out, improve out the value. So with Kepware, you know, we, we actually we have scalability in mind and we, we kind of look at it in two different ways. So we have the idea of scaling up, meaning, hey, you can scale the number of devices you're connecting to the types of uh, data sources you're connecting to, again, doesn't have to be a PLC. It can be another OPC server. It can be a database, whatever is out there. Um, you know, so we, we can scale in that sense. We're also saying that we can handle larger volumes of data. And, and again, there, there's a lot of nuance there, but Kepware is a uh, incredibly lightweight uh, application that can handle large amounts of data. And lastly, sort of scaling in terms of uh, managing all those instances. So 
again, when we were first, you know, sort of developed back in the 90s, it was a that point to point solution. You could do the configuration for one screen. Not a big deal. But as technology progressed, as the demand for data got much higher, there suddenly is a need now for a an entire we'll call it a, a fleet of connectivity uh, or, or data servers out in the field. Uh, so you're going from, hey, maybe one or two in a factory to maybe there's 10 in a factory and you have you know 40 factories across the globe. You need a way to actually properly scale up uh, to, you know, to deploy all that, but also to manage that. So we have technology or newer technology called uh, Kepler Plus that allows you to go in and from one screen remotely configure all of those instances deployed across your entire enterprise. And, um, you know, if you're interested in that, definitely go check it, check it out on the website. There's a lot of really awesome stuff there. So that's scaling up. The other part of it is scaling across, meaning, it, you know, again, it, there's a repeating theme here, but that point to point solution, uh, that same technology being used now for an entire enterprise. Now, if, in order to do that, you need a way to ease up on that administrative burden. So we've done new packaging that allows you to have one license ID to unlock all the features of Kepware. So all the drivers, all the different types of uh, you know pro protocol translations that you need to do, all that under one license ID that can be unlocked multiple times. So now instead of dealing with you know one license per plant or one license per line, whatever it may be, it's one license ID, much easier to scale. Uh, that administrative burden goes way, way down. And of course, as you're scaling across an enterprise, security becomes very important. So we have some features built into our product, uh, like Windows Active Directory integration, or even just more enhanced security features uh, to help you secure all the way across. So again, you know, as Niels pointed out in the research there, you're, you need a way to cross that chasm. And you can start small, but have that scalability in mind as you start to pivot towards that value. Now, with that being said, you know, that there's sort of an underlining theme we're seeing here um, is sort of this IT, OT working together. Um, so OT having the skills of coming in, um, dealing with all of these sort of weird protocols, dealing with this very disparate devices, but being able to collect that data and then send it up to maybe IT, I'll call IT managed uh, softwares, whether that be a data lake or, or a SQL database somewhere. Um, so with that in mind, you know, you, you have IT with the skills to go into help manage that at scale and also helping to manage uh, licenses uh, from an enterprise you know, level. So what becomes very interesting and very important is, yes, you have these two entities working together, but that also means that there could be a way to share that funding. So, Niels, could you maybe talk to a little bit around uh, how funding for these projects go? Yeah, thank you, Carol. So as you alluded to, but we haven't really dug into, is that having connectivity is a key element in order to be able to transform, in order to be able to pivot. And one of the problems with connectivity is that it, it kind of looks like plumbing and it feels like plumbing. And it's very difficult to calculate a return on investment on plumbing. And our research, we're not showing this here, show that industrial transformation has very big financial returns. But we need to go in and make this investment step that allows us to cross the chasm of being able to grow and, and connectivity is a part of that. When we survey uh, our, our members and other manufacturing companies, we've identified that Connectivity is actually a key element that they both are funding. We saw in the previous slide that the ones at the higher level of maturity have funded it and have implemented, and they're continuing to fund it. And we think that is absolutely critical. In this slide here, we're not showing the difference between leaders and followers, but we see that actually we have research that shows that the leaders are significantly more likely to go in and prioritize funding. And we saw that in the different levels above in the, in the slide previously as well. What is interesting about funding, though, is how it's being done in order to be successful. So in this slide here, we identified that it wasn't just important that there was money available or where the money came from. And we're also going to talk about what comes with the money. We asked the respondents whether the plants had to self fund activities or whether corporate was doing all the funding or alternatively, if it was a combined funding from corporate and the plants themselves. 
If they answer yes to the question, that means that the plants were doing their own, own funding. And you will see here that the, it's very clear that the followers had a much higher degree of requirements that the plants funded themselves. You see that if the corporate funded the plants by themselves, you see that it's about the same whether you're a leader or a follower. There was not much difference. The interesting part of the research is what happened when you had a co-funding between the business units, uh, between the corporate and the plants themselves. And an element of this is what we call the power of prepositions. We talk about doing industrial transformation, not to someone or to the plants or to the people or for the plants and for the people, but with the plants and with the people. And the industrial transformation leaders are 2.7 times more likely to partially fund from corporate. And as I mentioned, it's not just about the money. It's also about what comes with the money. And plants themselves quite often don't have the resources in order to transform. They need help. And it could be that central or corporate goes in and in addition to the money, they give automated technologies to accelerate distribution and update solutions globally across all the plants. And more, and more importantly, we've seen the, the need for creating a sense of excellence to go in and say, for instance, connectivity, we know it's a critical part in order to transform. Why don't we go in and create standards at a corporate level for how we're going to do this? How are we going to connect to devices? How are we going to share information? How are we going to use naming conventions? How are we going to do contextualization and so on? So that that is done at a standard level. And finally, the ability to go in and recommend partners such as system integrators, consultants that can help, or maybe it's resources from uh, corporate that go with the uh, with the money to the plants to help implement these solutions in order to transform. <clears throat> and, and the result here is that we're seeing that the leaders bring money and implementation support in order to do that. And 98% of industrial transformation leaders are providing implementation support, 58% more likely to follow, likely than followers, which is really quite critical. So it's not just about providing the money, it's also everything else. So Kyle, do you wanna wrap it up? Yeah, thanks, Niels. So, you know, based off of, you know, all the all the topics that we've talked about here, I, to me, I think the one takeaway that I'd like the audience to, to walk away with is no matter where you are in your journey, whether you're just starting out um, or whether you're you're there and maybe you're stuck at the chasm, um, you know, the you need to recognize that connectivity is absolutely foundational for any one of these projects. So whether you know you're just starting and you're trying to get a pilot, uh, you know, program up and running, uh, you have technology like Kepler to go in and, and help you. But at the same point, if you've already started that and you're having trouble with scaling, well, maybe that's another time to look at Kepler as well, where you have one platform that's going to allow to uh, allow you to cross that gap and to scale out effectively. Um, the other big takeaway too, and you know, it's sort of an underlying theme here, but Everybody needs to be involved in these in these projects, you know, IT, OT, but also across the entire uh, company. So whether that's, you know, HR with, with hiring the right types of people, whether that's, you know, accounting for trying to free up budget for these things, everybody needs to work together in order to get this journey up and running uh, and for it to be successful. So again, key takeaway here, connectivity is absolutely foundational and you need to have scalability in mind very early as you start these projects. Thank you, Niels. Thank you, Kyle. At this time, I'd like to open it up to additional questions.